What's up YouTube? Um, I thought I would make a quick video on how to clean the cruise control switches for a second gen Dodge pickup truck. Um, I watch a lot of YouTube and I feel like I should contribute back by making a video. So first I'm going to talk about how you get the switch apart. So if you look at the switch, there's uh, like these little plastic tabs and so um, you don't want to take it out from the the one that my thumb is touching right now on the left. You want to pry it out from the right. It's shaped a little bit different. So what I did is I was fiddling with it and then you can kind of see how it fits in there, the holes. And then so I popped it out like from like this side on the left. Sorry. I mean, I got to do it one handed, but anyway, so you just kind of pull up, you just kind of pull up and it'll pop out like from the left side, like, like this. So pop it out from the left side. I don't think you'll have much luck trying to pop it out from the right side or the inside called, you could call the left, the outside and the right, the inside. So pop it out from like the outside. So popping it apart isn't really too hard. Um, there's a chance you might break it. Just be careful. This video should help you at least see what's in there. Then you have this rubber mat that uh, that goes just in here, like this. It actually, these buttons need to face down. So yeah, you'll see that rubber mat. It kind of keeps the contacts clean. And then in here, um, you've got three resistors. And then on the other side, these are like the switch contacts here these pieces I'll point to it with the multimeter uh, probe so these here are the switch contacts and they these are the little plates that makes the contact so you can see this one where is it yeah this one has been been not cleaned and this one I just hit with the Dremel and the wire wheel you can kind of see where where the contacts, where it contacts here. I kind of just buffed it out with the the Dremel and the wire wheel. The switch was good. I just took it up. I'm trying to die, uh, troubleshoot my cruise control. The The switch was good. What ended up happening is uh, the uh, I just cleaned all this out. I used the paint, took this lens off and used a paintbrush and a sponge and cleaned the gauge cluster out. It was really dusty. But uh, yeah, so if you look back in here, um, you have all your lights. Uh, the cruise was burned out, so I swapped it with the overdrive off because my truck's a manual. I'm going to Napa to pick up some of these lights. Some of them are burned out. The number is, see if I can get it in the frame here. If you need these little small lights, it's gonna, oh, I don't wanna scratch it. It's gonna be different on certain trucks. But um, yeah, it's hard to see, but the number is PC 74 PC 74 it's like a Wagner bulb so if you just go to the parts store it's a PC 74 and with these bulbs um like you don't, I don't think you really reuse the plastic socket like you see if you look on the bottom closely here um like the wire is kind of embedded into the plastic so it makes it really tough to pull it out so I think what you want to do is they sell just the bulbs, but I think you want to buy the bulbs that have the whole plastic socket. And then up in here, um, we'll try to point to it. Like these are soldered in. So that's like the airbag, that one soldered in. I tested all those. Like what I did is I took a picture and then I looked on the front and compared some of these are empty. Like they don't have any light soldered in there depending on your vehicle. So, um, yeah, so I got the, I made sure the switch was working. I thought the switch wasn't working because the cruise light wasn't coming on. The cruise lights burned out. I got the part number for those at Napa. I cleaned the cluster. Um, yeah, and then I'll go over the resistance values on here. So let's see. I know the values, but I might get them wrong. Um, I believe this one is 470K. 
Um, so if you go on Google and you look up a five stripe resistor code, you can put in the colors. So like the yellow is gonna be like, I think a five, and then the purple is a seven, the black is a zero, the black is a multiplier, and then the brown is like it's a uh, percentage it can be off. So this one is a 470, this one is a 20K, that one seems like it's always connected. So when you just ohm test across these pins, you'll get like 20K. When you test, uh, when you test that one, you'll have 470, and then I believe the one that turns on the cruise is uh, 5.49 kilo ohms. So those are the resistances. I, I was trying to look them up, I couldn't find them anywhere, but I just measured them here. So yeah, that covers the resistances. And then it was weird, like when I when I ohm when I ohm tested like across these two points here, this that one, on one side of the resistor and the other, I got like 471 ohms. But then when I ohm tested like when I pressed the button and I ohm tested here, I got a little bit lower resistance. I got like 461. And then when I did the cruise on, that was like instead of 5.5K, it was like 4.3. But the switch still works. So if your values are a little off, I'm not sure why I'm getting a lower resistance. I, I could see maybe getting a higher resistance because there's corrosion, but it doesn't really make sense that when I close these switch contacts that the, the resistance goes down. I don't know, but it doesn't really matter as long as you're within that spec. And then what you should do is you should see like 5.2 volts on your um, like sensor or not sensor, like your signal voltage. And then you have your like sensor ground. So when you test your, when you test your signal voltage, I, I put my negative lead on like the door latch um, in the door jam because if you if you try to I don't know if you'll get like the proper uh, I don't I don't think that the sensor ground is gonna be like a good ground for you to test your sensor voltage because I ohm tested from the door jam to the sensor ground and I wasn't getting uh, like a zero ohms resistance it was like 370 ohms or 370 K so um, yeah I think this will pretty much take care of it so this is how to clean the switch a little bit on the bulbs, the part number for the bulbs, making sure they're not burned out, and then testing for power um, with, from the wire coming out of your clock spring. So I still need to clean the other switch. The other switch will have three contacts. Um, but yeah, when you open this up, I mean, you don't really need to take the switch apart. You can just kind of look and see, like when you pop these plates on, they're like, you know, they pop in right in these slots. So you'll kind of be able to see, you know, if you just look right in there, you'll be able to see if it looks real corroded or if it's not getting a connection. And then also, if you want, if you don't want to mess with the con, if you don't want to mess with the trying to stick your, your leads um, on these pins and then press the button, what you can do is just on the back, you can just ohm test from like that point over to like this point. And then that should give you the resistance. Um, so yeah, I think that's all I want to say. Um, oh yeah, and then I guess I just, now my light is coming on. I have power on the red, don't quote me on these colors, on the red and orange to the brake light switch. And then the, and then the brake light switch, I own tested it, it's good. And then I have voltage coming from the PCM down to the brake switch and then across the brake switch to the... I believe it's dark blue and red. It's it's the wire right next to the red and orange. So I have power now coming from the PCM to the brake switch, going down to my vacuum canister or servo, and then I have a good ground there. So then it's just up to the vent and the dump. And I think there is one other one on one other uh, valve that's controlled on there. Um, but this is just more about like cleaning the switch, making sure the, the gauge cluster works or the light works in the gauge cluster and then testing for power at the clock spring. And there's other videos on like fixing your vacuum lines and maybe troubleshooting more. So uh, 
yeah i mean if you like this video you don't really need i mean if you can subscribe if you want to i don't really make a lot of videos just i figured i'd make this one so if it helped you out um you can hit like if you have a comment um you can drop it in i'll try to reply thanks